sponsored by Brilliant. There's a new Mac Pro coming, hopefully as soon as this year. We could see a preview of it as soon as WWDC 2019 in June. But a preview of what exactly? That Apple has even been talking about it before any kind of official introduction is unprecedented. But hints aside, we still have no idea of what exactly it's going to be. We do, however, know what we want it to be. So let's take a look at both, what Apple has said and what Pro users want. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. Now to help me out, I asked a few of my fellow Pro Mac users to share what they wanted to see from Apple later this year. First up, Marquez Brownlee. Hey, what's up guys? MKBHD here. So for the new Mac Pro, I'm really looking forward to obviously having that modularity, being able to swap out parts. That's the major thing. And I'm also hoping for really, really high-end, fast internal storage, something like the four terabyte SSD that the iMac Pro has. And as a video editor, I am particularly excited to be able to actually upgrade the GPU of the Mac I'm using, maybe add multiple GPUs, because that's something we haven't been able to do in a desktop Mac for a very long time. And you've always been able to do external GPUs, but it's not quite the same because bandwidth is limited. And on top of that, this graphics card market's been moving so fast and there's so many graphics cards with all these advantages that I've wanted to try that could potentially impact my workflow that I haven't been able to because I'm using an iMac Pro. So just generally being able to upgrade parts, RAM, CPU eventually, but specifically the graphics card will be very helpful for a video person. So unlike almost any product in their history, Apple has gotten out in front of the new Mac Pro story, probably because the old Mac Pro story was so battered. As far back as April of 2017, Apple invited a very few people to a special meeting to discuss the future of the Mac Pro. From John Gruber of Daring Fireball, quoting Apple's senior vice president of worldwide marketing, Phil Schiller. We are in the process of what we call completely rethinking the Mac Pro. We're working on it. We have a team working hard on it right now, and we want to architect it so that we can keep it fresh with regular improvements. And we're committed to making it our highest end, high throughput desktop system designed for our demanding Pro customers. As part of doing a new Mac Pro, it is by definition a modular system. We'll be doing a Pro display as well. Now you won't see any of these products this year. We're in the process of that. We think it's really important to create something great for our Pro customers who want a Mac Pro modular system, and that'll take longer than a year to do. We're not gonna get into exactly what stage we're in, just that we told the team to take the time to do something really great. To do something that can be supported for a long time with customers, with updates and upgrades throughout the years. We'll take the time it takes to do that, and we've asked the team to go and re-architect and design something great for the future of those Mac Pro customers who want more expandability, more upgradability in the future. It'll meet more of those needs. Matthew Panzerino, who snuck the whole transcript up onto TechCrunch, also relayed this bit from Apple's Senior Vice President of Software Engineering, Craig Federighi. I wouldn't say we're trying to paint any picture right now about a shape. It could be an octagon this time, but certainly flexibility and our flexibility to keep it current and upgraded. We need an architecture that can deliver across a wide dynamic range of performance and that we can efficiently keep it up to date with the best technologies over years and Vice President of Hardware Engineering, John Turnus. Some of our most talented folks working on it, I mean, quite frankly, a lot of this company, if not most of this company, runs on Macs. This is a company full of Pro Mac users. Panzer alone got to go back again last year for an update on the Mac Pro. From head of Mac product marketing, Tom Boger. We want to be transparent and communicate openly with our Pro community. So we want them to know that the Mac Pro is a 2019 product. It's not something for this year. Perhaps most importantly though, was an introduction to Apple's then new Pro Workflows team. The people who would be hammering the new Mac Pro and all new Apple products with real world use cases to make sure it fit the needs of real world users. We're getting a much deeper understanding of our Pro customers and their workflows and really understanding not only where the state of the art is today, but where the state of the art is going. And all of that is really informing the work that we're doing on the Mac Pro, and we're working really hard on it. And what do those type of customers want exactly? Marco Arman, developer of Overcast and co-host of the Accidental Tech Podcast. What I want from the new Mac Pro is basically what we had before, but the 2019 version of that. So it needs to be really high-end parts, without compromising for thermals or size or power consumption, the highest end workstation parts you can get in a reasonably expandable and upgradable and serviceable case. And it needs to be able to handle any workload 
without making a lot of noise or other kind of ungraceful side effects. And that's what we had before. And I really just want Apple to do that again, make another Mac that has not been overthought or artificially constrained for goals that we don't need for this product because every other Mac serves things like you know, high portability, low power usage, low heat. We already have that. What we don't have is something that has no compromises and is expandable and upgradable and serviceable. So that's what I want out of the Mac Pro. And I really hope that we get that this year. And to Marco's point, the Mac Pro needs to be the system without limits, without constraints. All the CPU, all the GPU, all the memory, all the storage, all the IO, all the everything. Now there's two distinctly different ways Apple could implement that. The first option is the Innie and what many people say they want. It's the simple, conservative, safe solution. Just go back to the damn cheese grater already. My Nehala Mac Pro is probably the best traditional computer I've ever owned. It was, and still is, since it's still up and running, a marvel of accessible design. Almost every part could be opened up and swapped out, with not so much as a screwdriver required. Seriously, it's one of the most ingenious things they've ever made, and just updating that concept with modern computing bits would make so many pros so happy. But not all of them, mind you. There are some for whom even the cheese grater wasn't open enough, for whom only the Apple equivalent of a PC tower with as close to unlimited potential for slotting and swapping would suffice. But there are some problems with that approach as well. One, it's not really modular, it's just configurable. Sure, you can swap memory and storage and cards, but you're stuck with whatever type is supported by the case at the time you buy it. Everything PCI 3 is great until the moment PCI 4 drops. Being able to swap out the CPU is fine until Intel changes a socket or Apple changes its silicon architecture. Two, macOS just isn't Windows. It's a software engineering miracle that Windows can boot up day in, day out in a near infinite number of configurations. Could Apple provide similar support for truly any card or contraption now and going forward? And would they even if they could? Look no further than NVIDIA. There's nothing a segment of Mac Pros want more than support for those cards and the massive amounts of CUDA cores that come with them. But Apple and NVIDIA are still at loggerheads. So, I mean, I won't get into it all now, but if you want a video on what's going on there as well, you know, the let me know in the comments drill. But there's just no indication that Apple's gonna make Mac OS into Windows anytime soon. That brings us to the second option, the Audi, which I'm guessing far fewer pros would think they want and is also a more complex, radical, and risky solution. Consider that the 2013 Mac Pro's failure wasn't putting too little inside, but too much. That is, if you push past the appliance line, it's possible, it's possible a new kind of computer could exist beyond it. Drew from Talos of Tech and John Rettinger each made videos recently about just this kind of concept. Links to both in the description below. That would be less like the PC tower or even DSLR camera approach of old and more like the red camera system approach of now. You get the base, the brain that houses a CPU and just what it needs to be a functional CPU. And if the socket or even architecture changes over time, you can swap that module out for a newer, better brain module of the future. Same with GPUs. eGPU is already long past a thing. Apple even worked with Blackmagic to make a standard and pro eGPU appliance for MacBooks and iMacs. Same not just with the external storage, but with the external I.O. modules for external storage that, let's say when Thunderbolt 3 becomes Thunderbolt 4, you don't have to wait for Apple to introduce a whole new machine or to justify buying that whole new machine. You can just swap out the module. Some of those modules would no doubt be exclusive and proprietary to Apple, like the brain. Others could be partnerships, and because of external I.O., still others could be just exactly what they are today, completely open third-party plug-in hardware. But of course, there are problems with this approach as well. One, it's a bigger shot, which is great if Apple can sync that three-pointer with nothing but net, but worse if they miss, especially considering the current sentiment in the Pro Mac community, which after years of feeling, frankly, abandoned, are just starting to warm back up to the new Mac Mini, the new Xeon-powered iMac Pro, and the new 32 gigabyte memory option in the latest 15-inch MacBook Pro even as many are still feeling excluded, if not downright bit by the butterfly keyboards. Two, making something truly modular is hard. The red system is bulldog pretty, and that's pretty far afield from Apple's typical bead blasted aluminum aesthetic. And modular phone systems have gone precisely nowhere. Balancing clean with messy, power with flexibility, and function with form in a way that results in a real next generation Mac Pro, well, that's a design and engineering challenge for the ages. Something that's gonna require them being <laughs> brilliant. You all know Brilliant by now. Every day they publish several daily problems that provide a quick and fascinating view into math, logic, science, engineering, computer science, all of it. 
Whether you're stuck in a commute, dreaming up that new Mac Pro design, or the next one after that, Brilliant's daily problems are fun, bite-sized ways to master new concepts by applying them. Each problem comes with illustrations, animations, or interactive visualizations, and all the context you need to solve the problem yourself. If you like the problem and you want to learn more, there's a related course that explores the same concept in greater depth. So head on over to brilliant.org slash vector and the first 200 of you will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So you can view all the daily problems in the archives, unlock their dozens of problem solving courses and finish your day a little smarter every day. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Part of me just wants that updated cheese grater already. Keep it super damn simple stupid and just give me that big CPU box with all of those slots. Get out of my way and let me Mac Pro me. The other part of me recognizes the past as the past and is really curious what the future of workstation computing could look like in the future. Most people will take modular to mean whatever they want it to mean, from slots to stacks, a single tower to one built from many blocks. Rumor has it that, just like the 2013 Mac Pro and 2017 iMac Pro, we may just get our first glimpse of the all-new, all-next modular Mac Pro at WWDC this June. Until then, all we have is a sum of all of our hopes and fears. So hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments below and let me know what's on your modular Mac Pro wish list. And thank you so much for watching.